Hi, welcome to the National Fireman's Journal. I'm Bobby Halton and I'm here with my good friend Bill Webb from the Congressional Fire Services Institute. And Bill, thank you so much for visiting with us today. Um, it, this is the National Fireman's Journal. It's devoted to the interests of firemen across the nation. And the reason we use that language specifically is because this goes all the way back to 1877. And that was the original title of what is now Fire Engineering Magazine. It was originally called the National Fireman's Journal. And it was a bi-weekly. And uh, the tagline was devoted to the interests of the firemen of the nation. And since that time, obviously we've evolved and we're now devoted to the interests of the firefighters of the nation. But back in 1877, it was all firemen and ergo the title. So we kept that just for legacy purposes. But um, if, if you're gonna talk about being devoted to the interests of the firefighters of the nation, I don't think there's a better person to talk to really than you. Because although firefighting is predominantly parochial, as, as we would, I think, both agree in many ways, there's certainly a huge national component in, in terms of uh, now Homeland Security, disaster preparedness, interagency, uh, mutual aid across state lines. And that's where CFSI comes in. And a lot of firefighters don't understand how much hard work it is and how much goes into it in order to keep us connected. And, and I know Bill's working on several projects right now that I don't think he's at liberty to talk about, about how to help, help the fire service even move a little bit further um, up into the consideration levels. And, and, and right now, if you're watching this, you know, uh, weeks or months from now, we're in the middle of the, well, we're in the, I think in the beginning of the end of the uh, Wuhan COVID, uh, Corona, whatever, whatever name you're calling this thing, uh, ordeal. And so, um, we've been looking at all kinds of, Bill's been looking at all kinds of things for us from the Stafford Act to the Fire Act grant and working with all kinds of people to help push through some emergency funding for the fire service and what he can talk to us about that. I'm sure he'll be willing to, but Bill, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where, where you're from, how you got involved in politics and, and, uh, really, you know, how you uh, assume the mantle of the executive director of the Congressional Fire Service Institute. Well, for starters, I wish I could say I was in Indianapolis right now attending FDIC. I've been training awfully hard to beat you in the 5K race, and I think I'm going to have to wait one more year to have another shot at, uh, at, uh, at beating you. But uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, always a pleasure and, uh, uh, to, to help you out in terms of uh, uh, sharing information about what's happening in Washington, D.C. I've been doing this job, as you said, for about 25 years. Uh, I never did ever see myself doing this type of work. Uh, I used to work for one of the uh, presidential administrations, and when that president uh, lost, I became unemployed, and I found myself uh, looking for work, and uh, an opportunity to do some work for CFSI came along. I, I took advantage of that opportunity, not knowing how long I'd be there, and I certainly didn't expect myself to be here for 25 years, but uh, as I've always said, you know, it's not the money that really keeps you at a job. It's the passion, it's the interest, and it's the people you get to work with. And that's why I've been here for the past 25 years. It's, 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 uh, it's been a rewarding experience. And, uh, and uh, again, it's a good feeling when you know you're doing something good for the fire service of America. And I think that's what CFSI tries to do in each and every day. Well, I, you know, and I think you do. I think that, the, that CFSI has really, excuse me, a little lighting issue here on my part. Sorry about that. Us old people, we always forget to do the... The details always escape us, right? That's, how, that's why we walk through the airports with our zippers down. But the, um, at least I do. The, um, plus it gets the senior ladies excited. The, there's always gonna be some humor in this, Bill. You know, the, we, won't, oh, yeah. we won't get you fired. But okay. uh, watching your leadership as I have over the past, you know, albeit probably at least the, your entire time you want to see of us, I have, I've, I've known of you. It's been great to watch um, your style and, and your style is kind of unique. Um, a lot of folks say they're, you know, behind the scenes, but you really do stay behind the scenes. I mean, um, I know you have a board of, of mm -hmm. folks that are elected and I serve on your advisory board and been mm -hmm. very proud to do that for the last 16 years. It's been a, a huge honor. I represent the Clarion, what is now the Clarion Fire Rescue Group. And um, so you have everybody on that board. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, who, who are some of the key players and we don't mean to insult anybody, so if we leave you out, um, who are some of the key players that, that, that CFSI and you keep in the forefront while you're going through the year and you're looking at the various pieces of legislation? 
because although firefighters don't understand it, you know, we look at our budgets from county t taxes or mill levies, wherever it comes from, but we often forget that besides the Fire Act grant, there are li literally dozens of other funding streams that help support the American Fire Service that rely on some type of federal involvement and, and, and you and your staff manage to go there. So when you look at your advisory board, who are some of the, you know, I know there's clusters of interest, but what are some of the interests that you're always thinking about? Well, I'd say first and foremost, the person I always lean on the most is a guy named Bobby Halton. But, uh, <laughs> but, but beyond that, uh, it's, it's more about organizations. There's the politician. Now that, there we go. <laughs> now, you know, we, we don't have a membership uh, like the IFF, IFC, NBFC has. What we have is called a National Advisory Committee. First and foremost, we do have a board of directors, and I, re I report directly to the board. And their first concern is, of course, the fiduci fiduciary uh, uh, importance of the organization, sustaining the organization, and, and creating the policies that guide the organization. But we also have the National Advisory Committee which is unique in the fire service. There's 38 organizations, including Clarion, that serves on our NAC, and we convene semi-annually uh, to talk about the issues that we can address together up on Capitol Hill. One thing I've learned, I've been in politics for the last 30 years, is you know when you're able to speak in one voice and when you're able to build consensus, uh, that really does go a long way. So we, we the NAC, uh, again, we meet, we convene, we look at the issues that we can address together up on Capitol Hill, and once we can find those core issues, that's where CFSI plays a role. We facilitate the discussions, we help write the letters, the white papers, we will set up the meetings with members of Congress again to address these issues together. Uh, I've always felt it's very important, you know, we're always going to have differences. Let's have those discussions about our differences outside in the hall. But once we go into those meetings with members of Congress, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, let's make sure we have uh, a, a concise, clear message that we can all agree upon and deliver. Uh, members of Congress, you know, they're getting badgered from every constituency known to mankind up on Capitol Hill. And, you know, there's that saying, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, as long as, you know, we can, we can talk about these core issues together, the better our chances of getting stuff accomplished. We also have what's called the Congressional Fire Services Caucus. We have four co-chairs on the House side, four on the Senate side, four Republicans and four Democrats. The role of the caucus is very important. It's one of the largest caucuses and most effective caucuses up on Capitol Hill. And the reason that is so is because you have Republicans and Democrats in leadership positions that work together, not you know on any type of partisan basis, but uh, I guess in one way, a partisan basis, and that partisan basis is a fire service basis. And so these are members who have really pledged their support to work together in the spirit of bipartisanship to get things accomplished. And so I think, you know, to the credit of the caucus and to the credit of what we're trying to do at CFSI, we have a grant program, we have, you know, funding for USFA, and we have some other issues that are, that are having a positive impact for the fire service. Well, I know that, uh, you know, the, the caucus, as, as you call it, uh, at one time was the largest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know that it still is, but it's still very, very large. It's one of one of the largest, and and that's the ebb and flow of politics, right? There's yeah. always there's always other issues that that rise to the fore and and come back down, and and we understand that. But the other thing, and and I, I just want to make this clear to everybody: uh, if you're watching this podcast right now, and and you are interested and concerned about the fire service, you can support CFSI not just by attending the annual dinner, and Bill and I will talk about some of the plans that. Bill and I are, and others are hatching uh, to try to, the dinner had to be postponed like many other things. So we've got some plans for the near future, but we're, irrespective of when you're watching this, you can become a, a sustaining member. In other words, you can make a small donation. You get a t-shirt, you get a coffee mug. I mean, there's all, Bill has all kinds of chachis that, that will send you, <laughs> which are fine. And, 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 and it does show that you uh, care about the American fire service and that you want, all of our elected leaders to know about what our mission, our vision, our capabilities are in their communities. Because I don't think a lot of firefighters understand that, you know, um, I don't know how to say this any more gently, but some of the folks we elect are not that bright, um, having had the opportunity to meet many of them. I know Bill can't say that, but I, can. <laughs> um, you know, you know, just because they've been elected to something doesn't mean that they understand the parameters of your work. They may have come from a completely different industry. M many of them are lawyers. And so they're, they're 
their understanding of the fire service is, you know, basically backdraft, you know, in some instances. Now, others are much more connected. And, and Will Rogers said it best, we're all ignorant only on different subjects. So although they may not understand the fire service, they understand the law or they understand medicine or they have, and Bill's job and what Bill has done. And, and I got to give a shout out to the, your, your, your former uh, Pancho Sanza, your for, former sidekick, uh, Sean Carroll, oh, a yeah. guy who has since gone on to go to work for um, industry, the industry, in the industry. That's a good way to say it. The industry. Yeah. He's, he's in the industry. Yeah. But a wonderful guy. And, and Bill uh, would shoot me notes about, hey, this is coming up and we've got to, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to reach out to this person, that person. And, you know, everyone loves to bash politicians. So it's just, they're, they're like the comedian's favorite target. They're everybody's favorite target, um, which is great. So, but, but in reality, they're so critically necessary and their understanding is critically necessary. So what are some of the things that, just so back to the point, please, Go to cfsi.org, correct, Bill? Mm -hmm, correct. Mm -hmm. Professionalfiresources.org, cfsi.org, and, and throw 25 bucks. And uh, so the memberships was like 100 bucks, 25, 75, uh, 25. Is it still kind of laid out like that? No, oh, we'll create any level of membership based on the check that we receive. <laughs> Remember Soupy Sales when you told kids, go into your mom and dad's bedroom while they're sleeping and take the green paper out of their wallets and send it to me? I feel oh, like, yeah. I feel like Soupy Sales. That You're dating him, yourself, Bobby. I got, I got him kicked <laughs> off the air too. So, firefighters, don't sneak into your mom and dad's bedroom and take the money out of the wallets. But so, but please support. No, seriously, please support for this reason. It, it sounds like, oh, how how hard could it be? It's hard to get in front of these people. And so, Bill, just walk us through. Um, your offices are uh, in in DC. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is it Crystal City or DC, DC area? And um, so, and, and, then, and that's expensive. And then you've got a, a some very small staff, very, very, very small, small staff. Yeah. And walk us through uh, what the process would be. Say I'm Congressman Jones and Congressman Jones is putting the legislation forward. And, and inside that legislation, it says that, you know, all fire departments will have to have, you know, balloon rescue services the guy he's a hot air balloon wreck or something how do you get in front of jones and and how do you help jones understand what we're going through and then how do you get that back out to us let me uh a couple of things one is if you look at congress in every session of congress there's probably about twelve thousand pieces of legislation that's introduced twelve thousand twelve thousand you know, some of this is meaningless. It's not going to go anywhere. But there's only about three or 400 pieces that ever get signed into law. So there is a process, uh, despite what you might think, despite what you might hear coming out of Washington, D.C., but there is a legislative process that they're supposed to follow. The one message I always like to share with the fire service is get to know who your member of Congress is. You know, it's one thing to pick up the phone and call up Congressman X and say, hey, support this, support that. But it's another thing if your member sits on the Senate Homeland Security Committee and they're going to be conducting a hearing on reauthorization of the AFG SAFER program. Or if your member sits on a, on a finance committee and we're discussing and there's a piece of legislation addressing fire sprinkler incentives. Know your member. And if your member serves on a key committee that has current oversight of a piece of fire service legislation you have an important role in this effort that we're doing in Washington, D.C. Tip O'Neill, as you know, speaker uh, from Massachusetts, the late great, once said all politics is local. It really is. And so that's why we always like to find out, you know, who out there in the fire service uh, resides in Congressman X's congressional district or who, you know, resides in Senator Smith's con uh, state, Senator Smith, who might serve on Senate Finance, Homeland Security. Because that's where, you know, when you start talking about the 12,000 pieces of legislation and you get down to that 400 that ever see the, uh, that are signed into law, a lot of times the bottleneck is at the committee level. And if we have members of the fire service who have relationships with these members who serve on these committees, that increases our chances of getting these bills out of committee down onto the House and Senate floor where they can be voted. 
And so that's always the message I like to preach to the fire service, why it is so important. I do my role in Washington. IFF has their government affairs reps, IFC, NBFC, NFPA. But again, a lot of times, IFF is great at this. When there is a congressional hearing, you don't see the, the president always testifying. What you will see is the local president testifying, and that local president has his member of Congress sitting up on that committee dais. And so that's kind of how the game is played to a large extent. And that's why, again, we really, we really need local firefighters to get involved because that really helps us out. And it's not only getting to D.C., you know, in other words, to, to talk, but there, I know there's an old political saying that like for every, for every letter you get, there's a hundred you didn't get, you know, the, uh, people who wanted to write it but just didn't have the time. For every phone call you get, there's 10 or, some, or whatever. But when someone comes to your office, like your local congressional office or meeting, that represents like a thousand or something. Like that. I, I know all the politicians have that. There's some phrase, and I apologize, but there's some kind of phrase about interaction. So when, when a firefighter takes the time to really go to say, like my guy is Mark Wayne Mullen. If I went to Congressman Mullen's office personally to talk about something, that's important to those people. Or if I show up at one of his, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and their office is always put up, hey, you know, Mark Wayne is going to be here, here, and here, and here. If you want to come here, what he's got to say. And you can ask him questions and, and, get, and get a chance to have some face-to-face -face with them. And the same thing with your senators. They, they do the same thing. So, but it, it, tell us a little bit about, because the, the big annual event every year is the dinner. And that, that, that's the that, that's kind of the primary funding source for you all, right? I mean, it is. Uh, we are a privately funded organization. Uh, we've been working for the past 19, 20 years on uh, AFG Safer program, making sure that all that money goes out to the fire service. We don't uh, receive any of that funding. Our focus has always been making sure that the firefighters of this country get their hands on that money before anybody else. And so that's kind of an unwritten policy of ours. So the dinner itself, it's a National Fire and Emergency Services Symposium and Dinner Program. Uh, we usually get about 1,500 to 2,000 people attending, state, local, federal, uh, national leaders uh, who attend. We offer uh, uh, workshops uh, covering more federal issues than anything else. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we have our big banquet. Uh, we do uh, award presentations, uh, recognizing fire departments, organizations, and individuals for leadership. Uh, and then often uh, we uh, are keynote speakers. We try to get somebody at the federal level. We've had three presidents, four vice presidents, cabinet secretaries, speakers to the house address it. Uh, we've made changes in, uh, to the program in recent years. Uh, used to be a four and a half hour long program. I remember. I remember getting out of that one time at 1.30 in the morning. Oh yeah, I remember one year where the uh, the parking lot attendant from across the street came backstage and said, "Mr. Webb, we got to close the garage in 15 minutes. You better end your program quickly." Uh, and that's, <laughs> yeah, that was. A we don't do that. that. It's usually over by about 10 now. I mean, yeah, yeah, we've got it down to about three hours now. Yeah. So, you but know, that's a fast. That, you know, people yeah. can hold up here. That's a fast three hours because yeah. there's a it's a huge networking deal, first of all, and, and mm -hmm. everybody is, you know, showing off their ribbon bars, you know, like what, because we, we, most of us wear our dress blues, and, and so we're having fun, and we're networking, and, you know, the, there's different tables, you know, you get the guys from Maryland, the guys from Texas, and the gals from, you know, Baltimore, and the gals from, you know, Arkansas, and the, don't and, forget the, Delaware, and, and Delaware, <laughs> Delaware is always a big hit, because they're right across the river, and yeah. so that's kind of neat, but even beyond that, there's, um, all the different organizations are there. You know, you have the mm -hmm. sprinkler guys and gals and the fire marshals people. And the, so it's just a really neat deal. And, and different organizations throw kind of uh, get togethers, you know, kind of uh, tap a glass, have a, a you know, a, a horse de ovra and, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, talk with one another. So it sounds like it's a long word deal, but it, it really isn't. And the other critical part of it before the dinner that, that day, we call it Hill Day. Mm -hmm. and, and we go up and, and you knock on uh, Jones and Mark Wayne Mullins and, you know, S S Senator been there forever's door and, and uh, you know, try to get some face time with them to, or at least their staffers. And one of the things I often heard, Bill, and, and, and I, hope, I hope I have this right, a lot of folks think it's really important to get Senator been there forever and, and five minutes with him or her. Really, 
sometimes it's more valuable to have time with their staff because their staff are going to continue to have a conversation with them. And you might be one of 30 or 40 people that come through there that day and they're happy to see you and they're, they'll give you their attention. But their staffers, they're paying attention. And, and when you want to get a hold of Mr. Big Shot or Mrs. Big Shot, you can get a hold of them and explain why and they can explain to them and then your chances of, because their time, like if bandwidth is, you know, a, yeah. a lot of times people think they don't care. They do care. It's just, you know, you've, our worldview is the fire service. And, and if you really take it out there to, you know, 350 million people, there's a lot of worldviews out there. And, uh, and they're trying to focus on what they can focus on. And to Bill's point, if they're on a committee where something you're concerned about is moving up and their staffer knows that, and you can give them information that helps them make better decisions, that's got value. Am I, am I, am I on the right track there? Because it's not Yeah, you are. I mean, you know, everyone likes to have their pictures with the members of Congress. I mean, I've got my little wall of vein behind me here. Uh, so I, I got mine too. Uh, Lincoln was really <laughs> yeah, enjoyable. Yeah. He was. But, uh, you know, when I say we, we interact with, uh, with a member on the Hill, four times or not, we're interacting with the staff. Uh, again, I talk about 12,000 pieces of legislation. Members of Congress aren't going to know half the bills that are being introduced. Uh, and they don't, uh, you know, they're not going to be studying every night uh, fire service issues in preparation for their, their meeting the following day with, you know, fire service officials. It's going to be that congressional staffer. The congressional staffers, are, they are the eyes and ears for the members of Congress. Uh, and it is very important, again, to uh, maintain those working relationships. And the one thing I always like to point out, too, is, you know, keep it on a nonpartisan level. I've always said, you know, we do best when we keep it nonpartisan. If you look, you know, you uh, being uh, politically astute, you know, and then like, uh, like to follow how uh, Congress and administrations, you'll, you know how it's changed over the years. One session, Republicans are in control of the House. The next session, the Democrats. You can't box yourself in and be considered or be uh, uh, labeled partisan. And, and when I say that, I mean the fire service, you know, any organizations or just collectively. Because there's that, there's that change that's always taking place. So when you conduct these meetings, when you interact with the staff or the member, again, always keep it on a nonpartisan level. Talk at the factual level. Give them specific information. There's a lot of information that's out there. Uh, the NFPA, they have their, they've done four needs assessments on, on the fire service. We've used that a lot with the reauthorization of the grant programs and with the uh, yearly appropriation requests that we put in. And you know what I say to the fire service too is, if you get those grants, call up your members, send them a note, him or her a note, thank them. Uh, that does go a long way. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, members like to get the phone calls from FEMA, you know, saying we're going to award $500,000 for your local fire department to go purchase a piece of apparatus. The member of Congress wants to send out that press release, you know, to pat him or herself on the back. Or, and, they, and they get those big fake checks and go down like, it's, it's, really, a lottery. Yeah, it's you know what, it, it's the reality. It's, it's hey, how I think it's great. In this town. It's great. I, just, I, I love when they do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we take, uh, you know, every year we take congressional staff out to uh, the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute. And, you know, any fire department can do this with congressional staff. Take them out. And, and break every OSHA and federal regulation in the world by putting these people into live fire training. I know. And, oh, I've, yeah. yelled at you, and I've yelled at you for hey, decades. Hey. You and the so IAFF, far, and I love you both for it. It's, it's, so far, we've been okay with that. But, they always remind me, Halton, aren't you the one who said rules were made to be broken? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. As long as you're breaking yeah. for good yeah. reason. No, you don't really break. You, do, let them see what's like. you, you yeah. do get them a chance to see it. So, and it's called, isn't it called Fire Ops 101? Basically, it's a component of Fire Ops 101. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because that's the language we use from the IAFF program. It's called Fire Ops 101. And you kind of mm -hmm. do a, you, you do a version of that, a one day version, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was funny. One year, uh, we did it uh, and uh, we had uh, uh, some uh, staffers up in one of the buckets and, uh, and the hydraulic line blow up, snapped. And so they were stranded up there, congressional staff. And all of a sudden I get a call from a friend of mine in West Virginia, what's happening at the training uh, program today? What are you talking about? Well, I just caught it on the radio system. Uh, 
there, there's problems with the congressional staff stranded. I get a call from the members, a member of Congress's office. What's going on out there? Uh, yeah, you know, we've had one little glitch. We've done a program. But the that's, that's the real world, right? And think oh, about yeah. all the yeah. things you learn. You know, people think that our apparatus is, uh, you know, impervious to damage and failure. No, it's not. And that, there's a great yeah. lesson. So that's why maintenance is so expensive. That's why, you know, that's why you can't rely on just having one aerial device. If you need one, you better have a reserve or a backup. And, you know, and those are expensive pieces of equipment. But then that helps that staffer to be able to say, you know, no congressman or no senator. Yeah, they have one, but, you know, like any other machine, it can get a, you can get a flat tire. The engine can blow, the hydraulics can go. And oh, so I mean, yeah, thermal imaging cameras, you know, we put, we put the, in the burn building, we, you know, hand off the thermal imaging camera so they can see how the, those things work. Uh, one year, I'm not going to name any names, but we had a FEMA administrator who went through the program and we put him in the burn building and he got claustrophobic. He had to go, he had to leave because he had him claustrophobic. He'd never been in that type of an environment. You know, and we have congressional staff experiences in this, experiencing the same anxieties when they go in. And so it really helps, you know, when they understand why firefighters, why every firefighter needs a radio, you know, the important, how much the turnout gear costs, you know, the value of the training, uh, you know, once they start realizing that, yeah, these things cost 5,000 here, 5,000 there, then when you start looking at the complete ensemble and the training and the price tag that's involved, that's when you start understanding why local jurisdictions oftentimes can't afford these things. And that's why we have uh, AFG and SAFER in place to kind of, you know, uh, help these local governments uh, address the, the basic needs of the fire service. Because that's why AFG was actually established to address the baseline needs of the fire service. And I think, you know, and I've had discussions, we've discussed this, as we look at this pandemic and a lot of the problems we're hearing from our firefighters, you know, just getting the N95 masks, the, the, uh, the, uh, the robes, the, you know, there's a shortage out there. That's why we have these programs in place to make sure that our firefighters have the basic stuff that they need. So, you know, we don't put them in harm's way when they do respond to all of these calls. Well, and I think, you know, aside from regular supply stuff too, the Congressional Fire Service Institute has helped us with our interface with people like DARPA and NIH and groups like that, where they're doing projects that are going to benefit the fire service and helping make that connection with the elected officials. So when they come forward and say, you know, we're NIST and people, everybody knows NIST, they do lots of fire. <clears throat> Everyone understands that. But what they don't understand is that there's a lot of other agencies that are doing really important research and work and, and developing programs that are gonna directly impact our mission. And so I know that uh, oftentimes Congressional Fire Services Institute has had a, a huge influence in helping maintain, you know, those folks and helping explain why those folks work is so important to us and 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 for that i'm, I'm really i'm always really grateful of the work you do and one of the things that people it happens to us all the time and we get mad about it because people go well, how hard can firefighting be you show up with your hose and you put the fire out right yeah yeah you know it, it, it it's like when you w watch a professional football game and there's the quarterback and you can see three or four receivers wide open throw the ball throw the ball yeah. well he's got four gigantic people who want to tear his head off and, you know, destroy him right in his face. So he can't see anything, but you know, these four monsters, <clears throat> but we can, right. And it's the same thing when you're an elected official, you've got these gigantic issues in front of you, but that down the field opportunity, it, it, whether it's in funding or support or connectivity, uh, is so critical, and, and I think that I think that the Congressional Fire Service Institute does a great job on it. So, as, as you're looking down the road at 2021, 2021, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things, uh, hurdles, opportunities that that you're going to be working on? And then um, I don't know if you if you have a date yet for the rescheduled dinner, or just some of the things you want to get out to the fire service right now. Folks will probably be watching this in the next, you know couple okay. of days and 
You know, I think a lot of it, Bobby, is messaging. Uh, you know, we talk about firefighters this, firefighters that, but I really think we need to start focusing on fire and emergency services. Uh, you know, we can't box ourselves in by just, you know, uh, saying that we fight fires. Uh, that really doesn't help us when we go up to Capitol Hill. Uh, we do more than that, as you know. I mean, I think it's what, 35 million calls annually? Fire might make up, I don't know, 3 million of those calls. It's a lot of it's CMS now, yeah. hazmat. And so I think in terms of our messaging, that's, that's what we need to start sharing with, with our elected officials, whether it's at the local, state, or federal level. Because I think that uh, they need to understand, uh, again, our role and the emerging challenges that we will be facing, and hence the uh, additional training that we will need, the, the equipment, we also need to talk about the threats. I mean, you know, we haven't really talked about cancer yet. You know, we got a piece of legislation that was approved to establish a national firefighter cancer registry so we can study uh, cancer within the fire service, hopefully come up with better ways to treat cancer, uh, you know, working with CDC and some other federal agencies. There's a lot of great work being done by the organizations in terms of prevention and education and awareness. Uh, and so uh, again, when it comes to our work in Washington, D.C., uh, we have to look at the broader picture of what we are and what we do, uh, because it's no longer so much about America burning as it is about uh, responding to all hazards. And so that's, you know, that's probably one of the most important messages I want to leave with your listeners today. Well, and I think that that's, you know, a discussion that's been ongoing, uh, I think, in terms of messaging probably since the 40s, more or less. Um, you know, if you look at our, if you look at our call volume, uh, really in, in a epidemiological, you know, kind of mindset, if you really break it down, um, si since the mid 40s, we really have been in all hazards. People forget that the, um, you know, 100 years ago, well, arguably 100, maybe 110 years ago, uh, horses were going up and down the highway, you know, hauling everything up and down the highway. Now horses are being hauled up and down the highway. So, yeah. <clears throat> but because we live in the present and there's so much presentism, we think the world has always kind of been the way we see it now. But th that's nothing could be further from the truth. And the mission of the fire service, and, and my family goes back a long time, has always been about saving lives. One of my relatives once said, "There's two generations ago." Great grandfather once said, "There's no reason for a man to go into a burning building unless it's to save another man," and and so that's always been the mission's always been about life. Um, we understand mm -hmm. we want to preserve, the, you know, the artwork and the infrastructure, as O'Hagan put it, and 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 the the, the things that man and, and, and mankind has created. But it, 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 in the final analysis, what's really important is saving life, and and we've gotten so much better at that. We've evolved into this incredible. Um, you know, we have paramedics now and we have PAs now riding out on rigs and we've got community-based paramedicine and we've got all of this growth. And I don't think any of it is, is, is in any way um, outside the original mission of the fire service. I think Caesar mm -hmm. Augustus would be excited about it, who formed the V Hills in 08 BC. And, uh, you know, the V Hill means watchman and, and to overlook the people in all their needs. And so I think we're fulfilling that mission more robustly than we ever have before. And to your point, exactly right. And, and the threats are out there, whether it's, you know, cancer or mental health or cardiovascular or thermal or, you know, gravity. And, and they're going to continue to evolve. And, and what's interesting to me, and I think what's really critical as a takeaway, as we kind of wrap this up together, is that we're never going to mitigate every risk in life to zero. And there's a vast fallacy out here that that's attainable and, and it just isn't um you know there's always going to be threats to, to 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 our existence and and i did a really detailed study on uh, the human condition and survivability and as far as i can tell nobody gets out alive well there was one guy who came back but you know that that's an outlier the rest of us there's a beginning and an end and so there's always going to be that need to be there for people when that occurs, whether it occurs you know, suddenly and unexpectedly, or whether that occurs through the natural process and, and our, our envelopes succumbing to years of abuse and use and exposure to whatever. So I love the fact that we're the, 
we're the fire department, we're the Congressional Fire Service, it'll always be our middle name. But inside of that is, you know, the individual, the humanity, that's the eye in fire. The, the, the resolve is that, you know, dedication to the mission. And, and you know, the, the, all of it's the energy, you know, I mean, it's a, fire is a big word when you break it down. And, and the Congressional Fire Services Institute has done a good job of letting our, our elected leaders know what we do. Because worldview is important. And to Bill's point, there are still places in America where the fire service, and I don't want to, I won't mention New Jersey and throw them under the bus, but because that wouldn't be fair. So I won't say New Jersey. I'm just teasing. All my friends in Jersey are mad at me now. But there are places there where the fire service is not really that involved in EMS, and that's okay. But pretty much everywhere else, and, and even in New Jersey now, it, it's really the, the most organizations are you know, blending the missions. And, and I grew up in a system that we were firefighter EMTs from day one. You, you had to have your EMT license. Now there are many places where if you want to get hired, you better show up with your paramedic license. And that's okay. That's evolution. It's not change. That's evolution. That's growth. That's, that's what the public expects of you. You know, they expect you to be Johnny and Roy. They expect you to be uh, Severide and Casey you know, off of, uh, off of um, what's that show, Chicago Fire. You know, the, the, that's who they expect you to be. And that's okay. Uh, the, that, that's okay. I think, I think both of those shows project a very good image for the fire service and, and do a great job of, of messaging for us. And our deep thanks to Steve Chikorotis. Uh, he's with the Chicago Fire Group, who does a wonderful job. And the other shows are great too, 911, whatever they are. All of that helps get the public aware of us. And, and I think they're well done. But the Congressional Fire Services Institute as much as the media promotes us, the Congressional Fire Service Institute promotes us where, where it matters. And, and, and with people who, remember, it's not just about Fire Act grant. It's not just about uh, UWASI. It's not just about CARES and all these other programs. That congressperson has influence in your community. He knows the people who are on your city board, your county board, he, or she knows the people who are in your state legislature. And, and they're always communicating. And so they're, what, they're, what they might be doing in DC with Bill's influence, they're bringing back home to North Dakota and South Minnesota and, and, and disseminating that into state and local programs and, and, and state and local ordinances and state and local initiatives. So the influence of the Congressional Fire Service Institute is not just DC, it's nationwide. And, and, and understanding that is critical in understanding why you need to go to CFSI, make a small donation, you know, do it today. It benefits you. It benefits the American Fire Service. It, it benefits your family, your friends, your nation. And, and it's really critical because to do this good work that Bill's doing, and I'll, I'll shamelessly shill for him right now, takes a lot of money. Having an office takes a lot of money. Having qualified, paid, competent staffers takes money. And, and those folks, you know, knock themselves out, work incredibly long hours, and, and there's not great pay. And, and they don't do it for the pay. Bill doesn't do it for the pay. I mean, he's living in a, a place that has the highest, you know, taxes and the highest cost of living in the world so that he can get our message out to these folks. And it comes at a great cost to him personally and a great cost to his family. And he's bore it well. And I'll just brag about you for 20, over 25 years, he's bore it well with no complaints. But it's up to us to make sure that he's funded. And this year, the dinner got, due to everything going on, got sidetracked. Bill's working on getting it rescheduled. As soon as it is rescheduled, we're going to promote the heck out of it. Even if you can't be there as an individual, you can still become an associate member. You can still go, go to the CFSI and, and, and get a mug, get a t-shirt you know, get involved, get involved, um, you know, and, 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 and if you can make the dinner at the reschedule, please make it. If you can make the little shindig that I'm trying to put together with Bill, please make it. Uh, but don't for one minute think that Bill's getting some gigantic, you know, CFSI is getting some gigantic grant or what are they doing with all the money? They're not taking grant money. They're not doing that. And I've argued that maybe they should, I don't know, but, but irrespective of that, I, I respect Bill's decision. He's not. Um, and, and, and still out there every day, 
making a difference for the fire service. And, and for that, we owe you a huge grit of data, gratitude. And, and, and I hope you understand that we really do care about you as much as I give you a hard time and, <laughs> and, and uh, complain a lot. Um, yeah. I don't love you, but I've learned more about the politics of the fire service from you than anyone else. Uh, your insight's amazing. Your, um, your finesse is fantastic. You're one of the most elegant people in the world in terms of your interaction with people and your um, communication skills and style. And, and we're so, the, the fire service is so blessed to have you, seriously. Thank because you. someone who didn't have your skill set, it could be a disaster. And, and I've often been told by people, they say, oh, we ought to have a firefighter running that. Oh, no, 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 we shouldn't. Um, we got the right guy at the helm right now. And, and when the time comes in 20 or 30 years and he decides to retire at the age of 406, we'll, he'll help us find the next right gal or guy uh, to, to, take, uh, to, 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 to take that seat. But the skill set is is wickedly complex it really is because not only does he have guys like me calling him up using four letter words every other sentence he's got to be able to speak to judges and lawyers and staffers and mathematicians and what you know aids to this person aids to and the military and bill bill's day is probably more complicated in its dimension than just about anybody else i know and, and never once, honestly, we have great discussions about politics, but never once have I heard him complain. And, and never once have I heard him throw anybody under the bus. And, and that's the truth. You don't do it as a matter of personal integrity. You don't do it. And, uh, and for that, we're also very grateful because the rest of us do it every day. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on doing it in five minutes. Just kidding. But the, it, it's a really great institution and, and it's a really wonderful, wonderful um, opportunity for the American Fire Service. And politics is local, but it's also global. And, uh, and it's also national. And the Congressional Fire Services Institute is focused on the national level activities that don't stay there. Uh, whether it's cancer, whether it's mental health, whether it's protective gear, whether it's funding, whether it's whatever it is, the Congressional Fire Services Institute is there to help us understand that agenda in the political arena and, and do it with a unified voice. And, um, and I think that's really important. I think unity now more than ever is important. And, and for that, I, 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 you have my unconditional support. And, I appreciate it. And, and, and for that, I'm going to send you a CFSI coffee mug. So. I don't have one. <laughs> I know, I'll get that one too. You know, no, what last point. you know what I do have? I still have, remember what we used to give out? Oh, I have to make a picture. Oh, yeah. Remember the old fire trucks we used to get out? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. I got a closet full of some stuff I could send you. Those were amazing. So, those were. Yeah. One thing I'd like to add, and thank you so much for those, those kind words. Um, I'll put a, a plug in for a couple of awards. We do award programs during our program, and what we want to do is showcase what the fire service is doing uh, in terms of firefighter health and safety. We have our Senator Sarbanes Award. And in terms of EMS, uh, we have an Excellence in EMS Award that we present. There are a lot of innovations. There are a lot of great programs. And I always said plagiarism is the best form of flattery. So what we want to do is hear from the fire service of these great programs that they've implemented and share it with the rest of the fire service uh, to help them, you know, uh, uh, address, say, a challenge or, or fill a void uh, that, they, they, that they need to fill. And so, yeah, when you do go to our website, yeah, please go to our, our fundraising, the, the fundraising portion of our website, but also check out our awards uh, uh, section because there's, there's some great stuff, that, there's some great stories, there's some great programs that need to be shared with the rest of the fire. That's service. where I was introduced to the uh, Riverside guys, the compression guys, remember the California guys, is it Riverside? Well, that I don't know. They, they, uh, they won the award for EMS Innovation, I believe a year or two, two years ago. Okay. And it was all about when the advent of compressions were becoming more prevalent and they had taken their cardiac survival rate and, and cut it uh, by two thirds. Okay. Yeah. Two thirds better, uh, you, you know, and, and it was amazing. And they didn't, didn't, they, it, it doesn't require that you do, uh, it's just how you do things and uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, uninterrupted compressions. 
and, and great, great guys, great story. But I learned that at CFSI. And, 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 and was able to help get that out into the public. We've done videos on it, we've had them speak, and, and a great, great program. So it's an educational opportunity, it's a networking opportunity. The dinner's a great dinner. Yeah. Um, you, get to, <clears throat> you, get to, you get to meet some of these people that you see on TV, you know? Yeah. And, and confirm all your suspicions about them. Just <laughs> yeah. I say it's our labor. I, go there. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, it's, it's a labor of love putting that event together. I always say that, uh, it usually takes us about five or six months to put together the program, but uh, you know when you have a small staff and they they turn off the lights and the help and then the show begins and you've got two thousand people out there, you know you kind of want to pat yourself on the back, thinking you know what a small staff was able to put together this whole program for our nation's fire service. So we take great pleasure and it's great honor for us to do it. And uh, you know like FDIC, yeah, we're we're going through this challenge right now. Hopefully. We'll be back bigger and better next year with our program, just as I'm sure you will be with FDIC. So uh, we can't thank you enough for what you're doing, Bobby, not only for uh, in terms of your support for CFSI, but what you're doing for the fire service in terms of getting the message out. And, and uh, again, just uh, educating the fire service and just being with your brothers and sisters day in, day out to help them do whatever they need to do. Uh, thank you. And, and I think that... Um... Last night I spent the night with the Fools, wonderful group, Colonel Art Leatherheads. They, they, had a, they had a great gathering uh, online and a, a mixture of inspiration and, and education. And it, we're all we're all connected. And the fire service is a really a small community when it comes right down to it. And we all have that common bond that we want to just make the world a better place for everybody. You know, we, we show up on people's bad days and we just try to make it better. You know. And, mm -hmm and then hopefully go away and leave them alone. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and for that, you know, it, we're, we're very blessed. I think we're very, very blessed. And, and mm -hmm. that's been one of the greatest, uh, it is the greatest um, pleasure and, and uh, thing in my life was having served in the American Fire Service and, yeah. and getting to know folks like you. So yeah. please, if you're listening now, please go to cfsi.org, that's cfsi.org, Take a look at the opportunities to support this organization. Take a look at what they're doing. Uh, you know, if you've got an issue or a thought, please send it. There's a, there's a thing where you can send them a message. You can contact the staff. Mm -hmm. Bill and his folks will get back to you. And, and, and uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you would like, subscribe to the National Firemen's Journal podcast. Uh, we'd love to have you follow us. We're trying to get two or three of these out, uh, you know, a month. Uh, well, you know, and, and so with, with folks like Bill who are out there making a difference, and maybe you weren't aware of what CFSI did and, and now you can become more aware and they're always looking for help. They're always looking for input. Um, and, and, you know, Bill's more than willing to you know sit down and, and Bill also it, it does a great job. If you're looking for a good keynote or if you're looking for somebody to come and talk to you about fire service issues, Bill and his staff, they do travel, they do speak uh, and you can make, you know, you can help support CFSI by doing that, by, you know, keeping Bill on the road. It also makes Mrs. Webb very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> Yeah. But no, uh, Bill and Bill does a great job. I've heard him speak several times. Does a marvelous job of uh, talking about fire services issues from a you know a very high level, and then bringing it right down to your community. So if you're looking for somebody for a graduation or somebody to open up a you know state convention, please think of CFSI and 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 think of Bill Webb. And and uh, if Bill can't be there himself, he's got a cadre of great representatives who he can send out and help you out. And and uh, so keep that in the back of your head, right? It, you yeah. don't always need some, you know, blue-shirted roughneck who, you know, uh, is going to tell you about see smoke, go there. You know, sometimes you need somebody who uses complete sentences like Bill. So, and, and not to, you know, put down guys like me, but, you know, there's a lot of me's, there's only <laughs> one Bill. So, hey, Bill, thank you so much for visiting with me this morning. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, I, I hope that everything goes well in your world. I can't wait to hear what the, uh, what the rescheduled date's going to be and what we're going to be doing. I, I know you've got Sounds big good. plans, as do I. And uh, as soon as you do, let me know. We'll put them out there. Okay, I'm going to go out and train for that 5K for next year right now, so i got to get going. <laughs> hey, you know, the, the problem is you'll never catch me in age. <laughs> That's so true. I'll just keep moving up age groups on you. <laughs> you take care. Thanks for everything, Bobby. God bless. God bless you, too.